What is it about No Man's Sky that just makes it seem more incredible than every other space game on the market right now? It all boils down to the science. No Man's Sky has this delicate balancing act between hardcore science, fun gameplay, and typical RPG elements of leveling up. Um, and so, while not everything in the game is going to be scientifically accurate according to the laws of physics in our universe, a lot of the laws of physics in our universe have been translated into the universe of No Man's Sky. So, everyone that starts the game starts in the same galaxy, at the edge of the galaxy. And so, not everyone starts in the same area at the edge of the galaxy. They're all kind of interspersed like this. And so the goal, basically, is for everyone to reach the center of that first galaxy. Uh, however, it probably will end up looking a little bit more like this. And as you get closer to the center of each galaxy, the game becomes more challenging, but the rewards that you get uh, become much greater. So something that you might have got uh, for very little effort near the edge of the galaxy will be worth uh, incredible amounts of money, a uh, fortune near the center of the galaxy. So making that uh, trip would be very you know, financially uh, beneficial to you uh, in-game. Now the galaxy that you're looking at right now is about 100,000 light years across. It's about the same uh, exact size as our Milky Way galaxy. And that's a pretty average, well actually above average sized galaxy, because most galaxies in our universe are what's called dwarf galaxies. That's basically considered dwarf, but some galaxies uh, can get extremely huge. Uh, the biggest galaxy that we know about is called M87. And that is 980,000 light years across, almost a million light years across. So in other words, uh, a, a beam of light would take a million years to go from one end of that galaxy to the other. Uh, it, you know, pretty unfathomable. Uh, in the game, there's going to be over 18 quintillion planets to explore. And um, I don't know if that number includes the stars and, and the moons as well. But I assume that it doesn't. So you can see that, you know, in each one of these galaxies here, uh, in each thing that you're seeing there is a galaxy. You know, there are billions and trillions of stars in each one of those galaxies. That's basically how they like, intersperse all these planets out. Uh, so it, you could potentially see a galaxy in this game that no one else will ever go to. Um, that's just how big it really is. So what we're going to do now is just zoom in really quick on a planet, like this one right here, and check this guy out. And uh, when you first start playing the game, you might be on a planet basically, you know, just like this, um, with a nice uh, atmosphere, um, a kind of a rocky world here, warm enough uh, for some types of life to live on. And when you get down even closer onto the planet's surface, it might look something like this. You know, you can see that it's got a blue sky, kind of a, a tepid uh, landscape, and it doesn't look like there's much life here, but you can see uh, a robot kind of floating in the sky there. On some planets, there will be robots uh, called sentinels, and basically their objective is to kind of maintain order in the galaxy. So wherever they are on planets, uh, if you start killing animals or mining resources too heavily, they'll start attacking you. So you'll see a lot of those uh, throughout the galaxy as you explore the game, but no one knows the exact percentage of planets that will have these robots on them. One thing we do know is that 90% of planets in this game are going to be barren. They are going to have no life whatsoever. Uh, no animals, no grass, uh, possibly no atmosphere, possibly an atmosphere too thick, you know, like Venus. On these planets, it's going to be a really great opportunity for you to gather resources because they're less likely to be patrolled by sentinels and less likely to be known about pirates, um, other ne'er-do-wells, etc. And 10% of planets are going to have uh, some form of simple life on them, uh, things like grass or algae or you know, possibly maybe sponges, um, you know, I'm, uh, that kind of stuff. 
and 10% of that 10% is going to have more complex life on it. You know, things like possibly fish and whales, um, antelope-like creatures, dinosaur-like creatures, that kind of thing. And then a 10% of that 10% is going to have advanced forms of life on it. And so that's really um, a lot of what you do in this game. You start near the edge of the galaxy on a planet, and from there you can decide what you want to do. You're free to stay there and hang out on your home planet and look around and scan the local uh, critters and, you know, try to find resources there and just walk around. Uh, you can watch the, the moons rotate around the planet or the sun set. Um, if, of course, you can see the sun on your planet, your planet might be dark always. You can also find a ship on your planet and leave, and from there go and explore other planets in that system, or moons, or you can check out the space station in your system there and buy resources or try to buy a better ship if you have enough money. You can also see if there are space battles happening in your system that you can choose to get involved in to give you uh, resources or units, which is the currency in the game. Uh, there's quite a lot you can do. And so basically your goal is to exploit resources from every system that you find and then jump to the next solar system. Uh, or, you know, uh, a do five solar systems away or ten solar systems away. The goal is to get a better hyperdrive so you can jump more solar systems uh, uh, sooner so that you can reach the center of that galaxy sooner. So let's take an example. The galaxy that we are looking at before is 100,000 light years across. So the radius of it is of course 50,000 light years. So what we need to do is get uh, basically 50,000 light years to go from the edge to the center. So um, if we jumped 1,000 light years a time, it would be 50 jumps. So let's say that that number is true. It's not true. I made it up at the top of my head. That would mean that on average it takes 50 jumps for the average player to get from, you know, the edge of the first galaxy to the center of the first galaxy. And when you get there, at that point, I assume that you'd be able to go uh, even farther and jump perhaps millions of light years at a time to go to nearby galaxies. And at that point, your map would expand and show you even more of the map than you could ever see before. So just like the universe of No Man's Sky is going to have a universal map, and a galactic map, and a solar system map, and a planetary map, this is what it looks like when you zoom out in our universe. And this is our best guess at what our universe looks like when you zoom out extremely far. You can see that it looks like the neuron connections inside our brains when it's looked at under a microscope. There are tons and tons of connections reaching off in every direction. And every little speck of light that you can see inside this incredible web right here is a cluster of galaxies. A cluster of hundreds of thousands of galaxies. And every dark spot that you see where you can't see any light, that's either dark matter or dark energy holding the universe together or expanding the galaxies farther and farther apart. Anyway, I hope this video has been enjoyable for you and that you learned something. If you didn't, leave me a comment and let me know. If you did, like the video and subscribe below. And I'll be making some more videos soon.